The VBOX Dyno is an exciting new program that will calculate your car's horsepower based on its acceleration and road conditions. The graph that you're looking at right now was taken from the Top Gear episode with Richard Hammond driving the rocket car to over 300 miles per hour. If you're familiar with this episode, he crashed the car on the very next run and was in the hospital for many months. In this particular run, he was driving the rocket car to over 305 miles per hour in the standing mile. The horsepower generated on that run was just under 2,200 at the wheels. So how does the V-Box Dyno do it? It's really quite simple. The V-Box Dyno calculates horsepower based on vehicle acceleration. The V-Box file that you upload to the V-Box Dyno is analyzed for acceleration and that acceleration is converted into horsepower. The V-Box Dyno also takes into consideration the losses due to aerodynamics, any gains or losses due to weather, any gains or losses due to headwind or tailwind, the gains or losses due to the slope of the road, whether you're going uphill or downhill, the losses due to wheel inertia and road friction. There's four simple sections. The first section is look up your vehicle. The next section is about the car and the driver. The next section is about the wheels and tires, and the last section is about the weather. The first time you look at the V-Box Dyno and see all of these options, you might think that it's too complicated, but that's not really the case. There's only about four or five parameters that are actually very important. All the others are mostly optional. Right out of the box, the V-Box Dyno will work with the values that are set by the program itself. However, these values are very conservative and could lead up to a 15% underrating of your car's power in some cases. So if you want it to be more accurate, it's best to try and input as much data as you can. Luckily, this is a very easy process and the tools that I'm giving you in the VBOX Dyno software will make it very painless and easy. So now let's take a look. The first time using the VBOX Dyno, I strongly recommend to use the Vehicle Database Lookup option to look up your vehicle. Using the Database Lookup attaches to the Edmunds.com Vehicle Database to look up your vehicle weight, frontal area drag coefficient, and tire sizes. The Edmunds Database has most of this information for every vehicle from 1990 to present, but mostly for American cars. Occasionally it won't have a parameter like a frontal area or a drag coefficient. Or if you own a European car not in the Edmunds database, use one of the web links I've provided here to look up your vehicle data. That would be carfolio.com or carinf.com. Those two databases are very comprehensive and will have the vehicle weight, frontal area, drag coefficient, and tire sizes for virtually every vehicle, regardless of year, make, or model. So the first time you use the database lookup option, make sure that it has filled in the vehicle weight, frontal area, drag coefficient and tire sizes and that those might be different from the default values provided on this screen. Any of them that are missing, go to the Carfolio or carinf.com databases, look them up and put them in. It's very important to have the vehicle weight, frontal area and drag coefficient correct for the VBOX Dyno software to produce accurate results. So now let's take a look at how to look a vehicle up in the vehicle database. At the top, we have some choices to search the vehicle database or search the vehicle record ID. I'll explain the record ID a little bit later. We start with the vehicle model number. In my case, I've got a 2008 BMW M3. And you'll notice as I go through and select these, these values get filled in only with the car makes and models that are appropriate for the selection. So for the BMW, you see these are all BMW series vehicles. So I'll choose my M3. And then finally, I've got a two-door coupe. Now, before I press this button, take a look at the vehicle weight, frontal area, drag coefficient, and tire sizes. Those are all going to get filled in automatically as soon as I select this. Those values were provided by the Edmunds.com vehicle database. Next, let's just do a little fine-tuning on this. Let's look at the tire type and road surface. Pull down the tire type menu, you can see you've got a selection of winter, summer, performance, or racing tires. These refer to the hardness of the tire, or how sticky they are if you want to think of it that way. Winter tires being the hardest and the least friction, the racing tires being the softest and the most friction. Then we have the road surface, the default being asphalt, but there's also concrete, 
which has the least friction, and rough asphalt, which has the most friction. By selecting these values, it will automatically change the tire rolling resistance. Most people don't have the rolling resistance at their disposal, so using these parameters to calculate the rolling resistance is strongly recommended. Finally, let's uh, just do the tire pressure. We can change this to any value we want, and you can select whether it's pounds per square inch or bar. The rest of the parameters can really stay at the defaults unless you want to look them up. If you know what kind of wheels and tires you're running, by all means, look up their weights at the manufacturer's website. Uh, 25 pounds is a very typical weight for a tire, and 25 pounds is a very typical weight for a wheel. So that's why these are the default values. However, I strongly encourage that if you want to get a little bit more accurate and fine-tune this a little bit better, look up the tire weight at the manufacturer's website and look up the wheel weight at the manufacturer's website. The, the last two parameters, the tread to sidewall thickness ratio. It's usually around 2 to 1. You can leave this at 2 to 1 and you'll be just fine. Uh, and the weight distribution. That's how much weight of the wheel is on the outer edge versus, versus you know, the inner spoke area. So um, most are right around 65% on the outer edge to the spoke area. So unless you really know what this value is, Again, I recommend you to leave it the same. Last but not least, let's look at the weather. Um, weather is uh, really one of the least important things that you can do here besides head and tailwind. Um, if you know the head and tailwind, put it in. Otherwise, just leave it alone. The horsepower correction has many different types to choose from. We can choose uncorrected and uh, of various different types. Most people want to know what horsepower their car produced on that exact run. That's why selecting uncorrected horsepower correction is the correct choice. It ignores all of the weather conditions except for the headwind and tailwind. The time that you would want to use one of the other choices of horsepower correction would be to compare against somebody else across the country or across the world with a similar car. So in those cases, uh, select, I would recommend selecting SAE J1394-2004, that's the most common correction type. Um, that's the industry standard that most people go by. The, again, the only time that you really want to use this is if you're going to send a graph or something to somebody else um, or compare against two different cars in two different areas. If you don't know the weather conditions where you ran your car, they're not that hard to look up. You can go to the Weather Underground website, that's wunderground.com, and Type in the city, state, or, or wherever you are in the world. Type that in to the Weather Underground site. Look up the historical data for that location, and oftentimes you can get an hour-by-hour hour, uh, list of temperatures, barometric pressure, and humidity for that location. You can input the values of those weather conditions onto this screen. Again, if you're using uncorrected, don't bother because they're all ignored. Before I wrap this up, I want to show you one of the nicer convenience features of the V-Box Dyno. It's the ability to look up your previous submissions to capture the vehicle weight and all the car data. Using this feature, you won't have to use the vehicle database every time to look up your car and then tweak it to match your specific needs. Instead, you can look up a previous run of yours and it will populate all the data with that run. You'll notice up at the top there's this text field called Save as Vehicle Record ID. That data is stored in the database along with your VBOX Dyno submission. The number that you see there right now is just a random number generated by my program. However, you can put any value you want there up to 64 characters. I recommend using something that you will recognize as uniquely yours. For example, your cell phone number, your email address. One caveat is that if you use this field to look up your previous records, it will only look up one. So if you have five or six records that you all use that same identifier with, it will only find and use the first one. So if you plan to make tweaks and use the vehicle record ID as a way to identify them, then append something like a number to the end of it, like a cell phone number dash 01, dash 02, dash 03 for successive runs. Using that method, you'll be able to look up each one of them individually. Okay, so let's see how it works. If you pull down the search, the default for the VBOX Dyno is to search the vehicle database. But if you pull down search by vehicle record ID, then you can type in your record ID in the highlighted area. 
I have an entry called MM Mile 03. That's my Mojave Mile entry. Click search and you'll see that it filled in all the data on the screen for my run at the Mojave Mile. It's a very convenient feature, but as a reminder, if you want to start here and then make any further tweaks, save it as a new vehicle record ID and then use that new identifier the next time you come in and use the program. Last but not least, let's look at some of the advanced features of the VBOX Dyno. If we scroll down to the very bottom and click on Change Advanced Options, you'll see that there are a few options to choose from. I'm only going to explain the one or two that are useful here. If you'd like to receive an email summary of your graphs, Google Earth, and so on, click on Send Email Summary, then fill in your email address. You'll have three choices to choose from. If you'd like to receive an email with all of the graphs, check the box that says Attach Performance Graphs. If you'd like to receive an email with the Google Earth data file, check the box that says Generate Google Earth KML File. If you'd like to receive an email that has all of the VBOX Dino runs in an Excel compatible spreadsheet, then check the box that says Attach a VBOX Dino Data Files. This feature will attach Excel compatible spreadsheets to the email you receive. This would be very useful for people who are tweaking their car and would like to see the differences between runs. I recommend to leave all the other features alone. The last thing we do is click the button to choose the file that we send to the VBOX Dyno and then click the button to submit your file. The results will appear on the screen and if you chose any of the email options will be sent to you in an email. Well that's it. That's an explanation of how to use the VBOX Dyno. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and learn how it all works. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to send me an email. Thank you. The graph that you're looking at right now was taken from the Top Gear episode with Richard Hammond driving the rocket car to over 300 miles per hour. If you're familiar with this episode about if you're familiar with this episode